Hello. I'm still in the, in the middle of reading Ivanhoe, but um, I wanted to take a break and read uh, some more of my French writers that I enjoy. Last night I read Sylvie by Gerald de Nerville, and I thought this morning I would wake up and do a quick review, and um, I realized that I still really had no idea what was going on in the story. It's so strange. And so I, I, I reread it again uh, this morning so I would have more of a uh, coherent um, opinion to share. And I actually st still don't. Um, so Sylvie was uh, considered by Marcel Proust to be um, one of uh, de Nerville's masterpieces. And the one thing that is very obvious once you've read it or while reading it is how much of an influence it must have been on Marcel Proust. Um, the story is the, the narrator, which is in, in, ambiguously uh, the author himself, and he's telling you of the, the experience that he had with three women um, that he loved and had various forms of re rejection, and it's uh, the stories of unrequited love. But as he's telling it to you, you very quickly, uh, I, I became very quickly confused with the timeline. Is this a, a memory from when he was a youth? Is it something that's happening right now? Are there really three different women? Is it the same woman? Is it um, maybe two, two women? Two of them are kind of mixed up. Um, and the, the language is so fantastical and unctuous. I mean, it's, it's over, overly rich, um, bu 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 buttery, fatty, um, ornate language to maybe to a detrimental extreme. Um, and so one of, one of the thoughts that I had is um, De Nerval was being so um, experimental and innovative and really pushing the boundaries of um, that idea of heightened language. And you could see um, how much Marcel Proust must have enjoyed it and then mastered um, a way in which to con convey very similar thoughts about remembrances and how, uh, how our mind works with memories and how it can be uh, fuzzy or vague or confusing, um, but the, the language is so over the top, um, and I, I actually uh, bookmarked, uh, I think, three passages that I would like to read. There's no other way I can convey um, how outlandish it is. So, um, the sole refuge left to us was the poet's ivory tower which we climbed higher and higher in, in order to isolate ourselves from the crowd. Having been guided to these heights by our masters, we were at last breathed the pure air of solitude, drinking ourselves into oblivion from the golden cup of fable, drunk with poetry and love, love, alas, of vague shapes of blue and rosy hues of metaphysical phantoms. Uh, read another one. The view opened up as we emerged from the woods. We had arrived at the banks of the Chalice Lakes, the arcades of the cloister, the chapel with its slender OGs, the feudal tower, and the little castle that had housed the loves of Henry IV and Gabriel, were tinged dusk red against the dark green the woods. A landscape straight out of Walter Scott, Sylvie was saying. To me, I, I, one of the reasons I wanted to read that also was that um, 
I'm always tickled by the amount of times that Walter Scott pops up um, in a lot of these older writers. You, you find it in like all the Victorian novels, but it's also in all these French novels. Everyone reads Walter Scott, so I'm also glad that I'm reading Walter Scott right now. Um, and then I'll, I'll read one last one. Such are the chimeras that beguile and misguide us in the morning of life. I have tried to set them down with so much order, but many hearts will understand me. Illusions fall away, one after another, like the husks of a fruit, and that fruit is experience. It is bitter to the taste, but there is fortitude to be found in gall. Forgive me, my old-fashioned turns of phrase. Rousseau said the spectacle of nature provides consolation for everything. Sometimes I go looking for my groves of clarins again, lost somewhere to the north of Paris in the mists. Everything has so changed. <clears throat> the whole thing is like that. And it gets to the point where you just have no idea what this person is saying. It reminds me of um, like the Barber of Seville, like F Figaro, or... Uh, Cyrano de Bergerac, or um, imagine if Don Quixote, instead of going mad and running out the door on his adventures, instead sat down to write. Um, the language is like that, like purposefully ornate to, to the point of incomprehension. All of that being said, it, it is a delight to read something that is... Um, so, like I said before, like fatty and rich. It's it's, it's like um, some kind of French dessert. Um, the the other thing I'll say, um, I, I was watching um, a, a video from Brian from Book Wanting. He had a a longer video. It was like thirty minutes long, and in it there was um, a, a novel that he read that he thought was um, not good and he read passages from it. The, the novel was um, something about Grand Central Station, I, th I think. And he read these like passages that were just terribly floral, um, like per perfumey, but obtrusive. And you read it and it just sounds like terrible writing. And it's very interesting to me that um, it's bad writing that's ornate like that can be just so close to elaborate language that is fantastic. And um, to me, the, the, the author that Brian was talking about made two critical errors. One is that the writer was being phony. It wasn't sincere. And then two, the writer wasn't being phony enough. Oscar Wilde said that if if you're going to put on a mask, you have to wear it, and by that by that he means um, if you're going to play a role, you have to own it. You you have to um, make it convincing, which is just confidence, just um, to take taking something farther, and um, b b believing. That you're going in the right direction, that middling, muddled, middle ground, um, just smacks of um, <clears throat> insecurity, and it you can you can read it right away. Like um, when you're reading this, there's no chance that it crosses your mind that um, the nerval had reservations about whether or not he should put in um, all the different types of flowers and Greek mythological illusions and you know, he, it's confident. Um, the last thing I guess I should say is that uh, De Nerval was a fame, went mad uh, famously, he just went clinically insane. Um, when he wrote this he was in the middle of a psychotic breakdown and a few weeks after it was finished uh, he killed himself hanged and if you approach it a 
with that in mind, it suddenly makes it, it gives it, um, it makes much more sense um, that you're you're reading the writings of a madman who also happens to be a fantastic writer. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. I think there's better examples of this kind of um, kind of rich French language. But if someone's interested, already interested uh, in it, um, it, it, it is um, definitely worth reading. Um, so I'll kind of end it there. I'm late for a train robbery, uh, so I have to go. Leave a comment if you'd like. Goodbye.